What's up, guys? Rick here with your betting and one-and-done preview for this week's Travelers Championship. In this video, we will look at potential outright bets, head-to-head -head matchups, and talk through your one-and-done options. A reminder that there are three more live chats this week. There is a Wednesday live chat, 3 p.m. Eastern time. That's all things Travelers Championship, anything you want. There's also an 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time Jock Market Power Hour. That is Stock Market DFS, all things Jock Market. And then Friday, a Cut Sweat Show, a data-driven Cut Sweat Show. Did it for the first time at the U.S. Open, planning to do it every single week. That is tentatively 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday, but you might want to go over to that room. You might want to hit the, the, the subscription bell because there's a chance that that time is fluid. I'm going to just try to time the most important kind of critical moments of the cut sweat. So tentatively 5 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, but that could certainly change in either direction. Okay, let's jump into the betting board for this week. What you're looking at now is the tournament predictor tool on rickrungood.com. This is where I simulate the results of the tournament. We compare them to the odds on you know whatever betting site you're on, the, the Vegas board, and then see if there is any value. Three golfers each won this simulation over 10% of the time. Um, Bryson DeChambeau won it the most, 10.9%. Dustin Johnson won at 10.6%. Patrick Reed won at 102 there is a case to be made, I believe, for Bryson this week. You know, the the idea that he is 12 to 1, he was 12 to 1 last week, wasn't he? To win the US Open, now you get a significantly easier field. You could argue that Bryson's skill set lends itself better to the US Open than it does here to TPC River Highlands, but he's got three consecutive top 10 finishes. The front nine he should be able to really decimate. You know, it's that's the side with the two longer par threes. It's the side with uh, what will essentially be a drivable par four, uh, the uh, one par five. That that's the side he should really be able to take advantage of. And if he can uh, make enough birdies on on the second side, you think that he's going to be in contention as he has been over the past couple of years. So you look at the number, you say it's twelve to one. It was probably twelve to one last week. His result, t twenty six. It looks much worse on paper than it actually was. He probably played 68 holes to the caliber of golf that uh, would be good enough to win a U.S. Open. So I, I just, I certainly worry about any potential hangover or anything like that from the U.S. Open and from that failure on Sunday. But uh, this number could have easily have been, I mean, if he wins the U.S. Open, what's this number? Eight to one. If he finishes runner-up, it's probably still something close to that, but because of the really ugly, uh, you know, implosion on Sunday, I think we're getting a bit of a, a reprieve here on his outright number. One thing I like to mention, especially for kind of the more recreational better, is, you know, if there's a bet you want to make, if you just want to bet a golfer and have a really good chance of it being a live on Sunday, that's probably Dustin Johnson. He won 10.6% of my simulations. Uh, his implied odds would have him winning at about 7.1%, so very top-heavy on the three guys who won my simulations. They each won it uh, pretty, pretty much significantly more than their implied number, and I, I really believe that Dustin Johnson is trending in the right direction. Talked about this on the DFS preview. Um, you know, He doesn't have a lot of great finishes by his own lofty standards, but he is heading in the right direction. The driver has been turned around. The putter, he's starting to figure it out. He's just got a, a couple of things he needs to put together for four rounds uh, to really to really start winning golf tournaments again, and, and I feel like this would be a pretty good spot for him. So again, if you're just looking to bet one guy or a couple of guys, and you and you're you're not doing this every single week, or you don't care. I mean, listen, you might not care if you're getting the best number between. 13 to 1 or 15 to 1 or 16 to 1. Who cares? If you're just looking for a guy who's most likely to win or at least be in the golf tournament on Sunday, that's probably Dustin Johnson. Patrick Reed, to me, uh, you know, I, I balked at uh, in, in, in DFS markets. Uh, I thought he was priced too high. He's $10,000 even on DraftKings. I thought there were a couple of guys who should have been more expensive than him. But a much better 22 to 1 number for read on at least on DraftKings. You know, now now it's kind of different. Now Brian Harmon has actually has shorter odds than Patrick Reed 
uh, to win this golf tournament, which is a little bit crazy. So, so let me delineate these things a little bit. I'm not sure Reed is a great option for your optimal DFS purposes. I would rather get exposure to him here in the outright market where it seems like he is not being as respected as much as, as some of his peers. After that, um, Charlie Hoffman was a significant uh, value in my models. So was Scotty Scheffler. These are guys that are uh, winning. The The outcome of my simulations was them winning it more often than their implied odds are. Reed, Scotty Scheffler, Charlie Hoffman all came up as great values there depending on their price. I think anecdotally, uh, or at least personally, you know, Abraham Answer seems to be catching a lot of steam this week. He's 28 to 1 on DraftKings. He's a little bit deeper than that here at Circa. And William Hill has him, let's see, also at 28 to 1. You know, I, I go back and forth on this. Um, betting guys to win that haven't won or don't win as much, you think about Tony Finau. Uh, now you're asking Scotty Scheffler to get his first PGA Tour win. You're asking. Abraham answer to get his first PGA tour win. I go back and forth on this. I think my, my, my heart says, why would I bet these guys? They don't win golf tournaments. Uh, but my head says they don't win golf tournaments until they do right. At some point, everyone had to win their first. And this is a really good spot for Abraham answer to break through. He's been, he's been phenomenal. He's been getting a ton of strokes off the tee. This is a course that uh, does not require distance. He was one of the, the first names that I wrote down, Last week, as I start to turn the page from the U.S. Open to TPC River Highlands, I have, a, I have a notebook right here. He was one of the names. Answer was one of the names. Harmon was one of the names, honestly. And it, you know, the fact that I see him now twenty to one at uh, at DraftKings is is kind of crazy. He's twenty eight to one at William Hill. That would be a much better place to to fire away. That's a much more fair number on Brian Harmon. Um, you know, I'll talk about some of the other guys as I as I get further down the board that I that I wrote down. But you know, answer is seemingly a great fit for a spot like this. Um, I don't think I need to spend much time on Keegan Bradley. Keegan Bradley is a guy that uh, I've tried to outline over the past couple of weeks how he is trending in the right direction. Now he gets to go to a place in New England that he's finished inside the top 10 twice. He is 45 to 1. While I'm on the topic of guys I've already talked about in, in kind of the DFS preview, and for those purposes, um, Doc Redman was certainly another one. Doc Redman is... 66 to 1 on William Hill. He is, let's see, 70 to 1 at DraftKings. I think he's 72 or 77 here at Circa. So I, I'm not going to miss on the first Doc win, right? Again, feels like we're trending in the right direction. Guys that I think are not getting enough uh, talk or, or maybe sentiment this week. Harris English would be one. What we're seeing over his last two starts is a guy who's more returning to the 2020 version of himself, which was excellent. Uh, he was essentially, he probably ran well below expectation in 2020 in terms of how many wins he was supposed to have. If I go back and just pull up the, you know, strokes gain total from 2020 and read through their victories, I, he might be the only guy without, without a win. Well, now that I mentioned it, I got to do it. Okay, so last year's strokes gain total. John Rahm was number one. He won twice. Justin Thomas was number two. He won three times. Xander was number three. He did not win. Webb was number four. He won twice. Bryson was five. He won once. Berger was six. He won once, and then it was Harris English who won zero times. So him and Xander are the only guys who did not win golf tournaments, and that would be well below expectation based on their strokes gain total numbers throughout the year. Um, what we saw in his last two starts, well-rounded version of himself. If he gets back to that 2020 version, he is kind of owed some wins. I know we got one at the Tournament of Champions, but uh, that would certainly be someone I'm interested in. And you can get him at a pretty deep number for, let me see here. Uh, William Hill has him at, well, has him at 33. DraftKings has him at 50. So you're going to want to shop this um, to see if you can get the best number on Harris English. I like Matthew Wolf this week. Unfortunately, uh, sports books were not going to get burned 
quickly, and they've they've seen enough. 225 last week at the U.S. Open, 35 to one this week. I listen. I don't. I don't want to wish ill on the kid. He's awesome. I hope he wins a lot of golf tournaments. If I could just ask him to finish mm, T52 this week and go win Rocket Mortgage uh, and see if I can get a 40 to one number on him there, something like that. I just, I just, I'm not going to be around for the. The super quick adjustment. I'm going to let this line try to settle for a bit, see what Matthew Wolf is really doing. But it's very encouraging that the driver is back in shape. That is something uh, we've been missing for quite some time. So uh, good to see Matthew Wolf swinging it well. I don't think I can get to him with this number, but I'm going to keep a very, very close eye on that for the next couple of weeks moving forward. All right, let's talk head-to-head matchups here. So this is the head-to-head matchup tool on rickrungood.com. You can choose any time period that you want and choose any two golfers that you want, and it will pump out the likelihood that each one wins a four-round matchup. Let's start with Patrick Cantlay versus Paul Casey. Cantlay seemingly out of that mini slump that he was in. Now putting much better, looking better from tee to green. If we do since the start of 2020, that's a long time ago, Patrick Cantlay wins this about 64% of the time. Means his money line would be about minus 181. He is minus 120 on DraftKings right now. If we move this to the start of 2021, it gets much closer in which Paul Casey, uh, it's essentially a coin flip. Casey is 49.5. Patrick Cantlay, 50.5%. Now, Casey is minus 110 here. And the other thing to consider with Paul Casey is... If you're looking at it again from 2021 on, he's won a golf tournament in 2021 that's not showing up in these metrics because it was on the European tour. So he's probably played a little bit better than this. Has he played better than Patrick Cantlay? You can decide that, but he's probably played a little bit better than this. And if we do continue to shorten the time frame, you know, we go from February on. Casey does become the favorite here, minus 134. So if you're willing to kind of ride with a shorter term look back period I think Paul Casey is the side that you would want to lean on here here's a bit of a deeper one Cameron Tringale versus Aaron Wise very interested to see what this says I have Tringale since the start of 2021 winning this 53 percent of the time Aaron Wise is a small he's minus 120 to Cameron Tringale is minus 110 on DraftKings can I make that come true if I shorten this up a little bit. Yeah. Again, if you kind of go since that February period, mid-February, you can start to get Aaron Wise to be the favorite. I, I I think Aaron Wise is much more appealing from a, I don't know, top 10, top 20 number than maybe getting him in outright, or excuse me, in matchup situations. You know, he has been truly volatile. Let me sh- see if I can show you this. So I'm showing you Aaron Wise's results right now uh, since, call it, the end of 2020-ish. He's missed four cuts. He's kind of offset them with three or four top 10s, top 15 finishes. He doesn't do a lot of consistency. Now, I will say since the start of 2021, the driver has been much improved. The approach game has been much improved. And the putter, which has historically been horrendous, well, in the last two starts, he's gained strokes there as well. So maybe he's found something. I think Wise um, certainly becoming a better shorter-term investment, but I, I still do wonder about the consistency, and I wonder if that's worth targeting in a matchup or if we should just be trying to get Aaron Wise in our DFS lineups, our maybe top 10 bets, our top 20 bets, things things of that nature. That's probably how I'll deploy Wise this week, not so much from a straight up matchup uh, perspective. I'm trying to see if I can find a big discrepancy uh, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. We can try this one. I I think that most people aren't realizing how good Scotty Scheffler has been. It's Patrick Reed versus Scotty Scheffler though. So I I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to really, um, really see much here. So let's do, so since, let me see what I can do here. Since the start of uh, February ish, essentially after Patrick Reed's win at Torrey Pines, after that, Scotty Scheffler would win this matchup 53% of the time. He's minus 110 to Patrick Reed's minus 120. You go see the problem is if you go back longer, this is probably gonna benefit Reed pretty significantly. 
or maybe not significantly, but every like almost every 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 time along the way. Yeah, it's just it's gonna be hard to get Scotty Scheffler to be a favorite in this matchup. Um, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. It would have to be it would have to be shorter term. There's a couple of times you can get it. I I don't I don't know if there is if there is a significant big difference or at least not on the matchups that uh, DraftKings is offering right now. If you want to you know use the tool and put in anything you want, uh, but my my larger point was hopefully to show how good Scotty Scheffler has been. You know he has four top ten finishes. Uh, and one of them is the Zurich in his last seven starts. You know, he missed the cut to Charles Schwab, but that was because of a really horrendous putter. He's putted much better since then. The driving's been great. The ball striking has been great. Uh, the short game has actually been okay uh, and sometimes amazing. So I, I don't know. I think because of there's a new flavor of the month this week, you know, there's a new Brian, you know, Brian Harmon, Abraham answer that Scotty Scheffler is kind of going overlooked. He's played really, really beautifully. And unfortunately, I can't get him into a, um, uh, a, a winning position against Patrick Reed in a matchup, but there might be a lot of other guys that I would like against him. Um, I would like him in a matchup against. And I think it's a good segue into one and done because he's probably a pretty good one and done option if you have not used him yet. Uh, lots of money up for grabs last week, and a lot of you earned it. John Rahm, 2.25, I believe, million is what he ended up getting. Lots of people had him. Um, in the run good one and done, he is now, of course, the most used golfer. Basically, everybody has used him at some point this year. Um, and Caster Joshua continues to lead and is opening his gap, 15.5 million. Graybo in second, Nash the Flash, Chappy Chaps, and the Herminator has actually made a move into the top five. So congratulations to them. I mentioned Scotty Scheffler. You know, this is not necessarily a, a large uh, a large purse for this week, but hey, over a million bucks for first prize. If you can go out and get that, certainly going to be worth it. I imagine uh, you probably are not using Bryson this week. You, you've either already used him or you will use him maybe at Rocket Mortgage. That seems like the most logical place. I don't have any problem saving Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, Dustin Johnson, similarly, you've probably already used or maybe you are earmarking him for something with a larger prize pool and something that is uh you know maybe you're seeing his play a little bit more improved so i don't have any problem with you skipping on those guys at the top which leaves us with uh the obvious choices the obvious choices are abraham answer and uh, brian Harmon and keegan bradley they are going to be the flavors of the week i've talked about all three of those pretty much at, at length this week. So I don't have any problem. If you want to roll out those, just understand you will certainly not be alone in that department. A couple of guys that I think you could pivot to. Um, interesting to see uh, uh, Paul Casey here. You might have used him at Valspar. You might be saving him for something, but this is probably one of the better spots for Paul Casey. You know, he is a, a great ball striker who 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 has um an opportunity to just hit everything to 10 feet and 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 go out there and try to roll in as many putts as, as humanly possible. He's been playing beautifully. I would not mind that. I actually, if you're trying to make up a lot of ground, would not mind Matthew Wolf here. Uh what I saw at the US Open is a guy who found his weapon again. We talk about that a lot. A guy who found his weapon at the U.S. Open gained nearly four and a half shots off the tee. If he's going to do that routinely moving forward, he's going to be scary again, especially in a field and a course like this. I, I, I see he is not very good around the greens. My argument to that is if you're tapping into that this week, you're probably in trouble. So I would not mind Matthew Wolf this week or at Rocket Mortgage. Similarly, Joaquin Neiman was a guy that last week I was really worried about because of the around the green play. Let's see what he actually did last week around the greens. 
Lost again. Actually got a little bit better, but made it five consecutive events in which he lost strokes around the green. Didn't putt particularly well, but that was a bit of an outlier. I don't mind buying back in on Joaquin Neiman this week, assuming he's going to gain strokes putting, something that he did uh, from every event from the, the Players' Championship to the Memorial, and we're seeing improvements around the green. And as I mentioned with Matthew Wolf, if you're really needing to get up and down for par, you're probably not winning this golf tournament. That That's... That's that's my argument here. So so Neiman and Wolf would probably be, I believe, the sneakiest kind of contrarian options for you to make a move on this week. I don't mind those one single bit. I think that's going to do it. Bets and one and done preview. It's it's in the books. Uh, you can tweet me at Rick Run Good. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know who you're going with this week. And of course, plenty more. At this point, the rest of the content is live chats, I believe, for the rest of the week. Three of them. Two on Wednesday, one on Friday. Maybe I can slip a 300 yards to unknown in there somewhere. Uh, maybe on Thursday. Who knows? I meant to t I was gonna I was gonna take the I was gonna relax a little bit this week, but not sure I have that gear. Um, all right. Anyway, best of luck this week, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.